Within your will, O Lord, all things are established, and there is none that can resist your will. For you have made all things, the heaven and the earth, and all that is held within the circle of heaven. You are the Lord of all. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The Lord be with you. Good to see you here this morning. Some real people. (laughs) And good morning to all those who are watching on live stream as well. Not watching, but participating. You are part of this Mass. I'm saying this Mass this morning for the intentions of Mary Scullion, so we keep her in mind. In today's Gospel, Jesus again uses humour as a way of making his main point. A great master of visual arts and of a good turn of phrase and hyperbole, exaggeration, with planks and splinters and things like that. He knew how to get his point home. Does his point go home to us? That's what we need to ask ourselves. Are we becoming so familiar with the words that we say to ourselves, we know that, we know that, yes, we know that, and we pack it all away and we don't examine those words. Perhaps we need to pay a little more attention to our readings each day of the week and each Sunday. Let us call to mind our sins and so prepare ourselves to celebrate these sacred mysteries. I confess to Almighty God and to you, my brothers and sisters, that I have greatly sinned in my thoughts and in my words, in what I have done and in what I have failed to do, through my fault, through my fault, through my most grievous fault. Therefore, I ask, Blessed Mary of a Virgin, all the angels and saints, and you, my brothers and sisters, to pray for me to the Lord our God. May Almighty God have mercy upon us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Lord, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Let us pray. Almighty, ever-living God, who in the abundance of your kindness surpass the merits and the desires of those who entrust you, pour out your mercy upon us to pardon what conscience dreads, and to give what prayer does not dare to ask. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, for ever and ever. Amen. A reading from the letter of St. Paul to the Galatians. Are you people in Galatia mad? Has someone put a spell on you? In spite of the plain explanation you have had of the crucifixion of Jesus Christ, let me ask you one question. Was it because you practiced the law that you received the Spirit? or because you believed what was preached to you? Are you foolish enough to end in outward observation what you began in the spirit? Have all the favors you received been wasted? And if this were so, they would most certainly have been wasted. Does God give you the spirit so freely and work miracles among you because you practiced the law, or because you believed what was preached to you. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The response to the psalm is, Blessed be the Lord, the God of Israel. He has visited his people. Blessed Blessed be be the Lord, the the God God of Israel. Israel. He has visited his people. God has raised up for us a mighty Savior in the house of David, his servant as he promised by the lips of holy men, those who are his prophets from of old. Blessed Blessed be the Lord, the the God God of Israel. Israel. He has has visited visited his his people. people. 
a saviour who would free us from our foes, from the hands of all who hate us, so his love for our fathers is fulfilled and his holy covenant remembered. Blessed be the Lord, the God of Israel. He has visited his people. He swore to Abraham, our father, to grant us that free from fear and saved from the hands of our foes, we might serve him in holiness and justice all the days of our life in his presence. Blessed be the Lord, the God of Israel. He has visited his people. The Gospel Acclamation. Alleluia, alleluia. I am the way, the truth, and the life, says the Lord. No one can come to the Father except through me. Alleluia. The Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Luke. Jesus said to his disciples, suppose one of you has a friend and goes to him in the middle of the night to say, my friend, lend me three loaves because a friend of mine on his travels has just arrived at my house and I have nothing to offer him. And the man answers from inside the house, do not bother me. The door is bolted now and my children and I are in bed. I cannot get up to give it to you. I tell you, If the man does not get up and give it him for friendship's sake, persistence will be enough to make him get up and give his friend all he wants. So I say to you, ask and it will be given to you. Search and you will find. Knock and the door will be opened to you. For the one who asks always receives. The one who searches always finds. The one who knocks will always have the door open to him. What father among you would hand his son a stone when he asks for bread? Or hand him a snake instead of a fish? Or hand him a scorpion if he asks for an egg? If you then, who are evil, know how to give your children what is good, how much more will your heavenly father give the Holy Spirit to those who ask him? The Gospel of the Lord. Do you sometimes have difficulty in prayer? I think it's safe to assume that even 2,000 years ago, people sometimes found prayer very difficult and struggled with it, as we all do at times. Jesus again illustrates his teaching with some humorous story which the mind can picture to get his message across. The image of the drowsy neighbour in bed with his children and a parent wanting the very best of his, for his child helps us understand a little bit about the process of prayer. Of course, like any parable, it is, a th- it is the thrust of the message that matters and that's the important thing. And some of the details cannot be taken too far. For instance, Jesus was not implying that God, like the sleepy man, doesn't really want to be bothered with helping us, but only does so out of sheer frustration if we go on at him. The message is in the fact, in the manner of asking. That's what he's getting at. It seems that Jesus is telling us in the first parable to be patient persistent, committed to know what we are asking for and to be single-minded in our approach to it. Of course, actually God knows what we want before we ask of it and our prayers do not come as news to him. We cannot know why our prayers seem to be unanswered, at least at first. But if we are prepared to live with the mystery of it all and keep on praying sincerely, then Jesus is telling us God will answer and will probably teach us many things during the process of our prayer. Any parent knows <coughs> that the, their love for their child means that they would willingly give them anything they ask for, so long as it's good for them. All parents are aware that personally 
they are flawed. And because of these human imperfections, which afflict all generations, some of us may have more difficulty than others in relating to the unconditional love that comprises the parenthood of God. Nevertheless, Jesus is telling us not to ignore the obvious, that God's very essence of love compels him to act always in the interest of us, his beloved children. And that truth is the overarching principle which applies in all prayer. He's there, he's listening, he will reply. We have to have patience. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we have the bread we offer you. Fruit of the earth and work of human hands it will become for us the bread of life. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we have the wine we offer you. Fruit of the vine and work of human hands, it will become our spiritual drink. Blessed be God forever. Pray, my brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. Accept, O Lord, we pray, the sacrifices instituted by your commands, and through the sacred mysteries <coughs> which we celebrate with dutiful service, graciously complete the sanctifying work by which you are pleased to redeem us. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God, through Christ our Lord. For by his birth he brought renewal to humanity's fallen state, and by his suffering cancelled out our sins. By rising from the dead he has opened the way to eternal life, and by ascending to you, O Father, he has unlocked the gates of heaven. And so, with the company of angels and saints, we say the hymn of your praise as without end we acclaim, Holy, 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 Lord God of hosts. Heaven and earth are full of your glory. 
Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. You are indeed holy, O Lord, the fount of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts, we pray, by sending down your Spirit upon them, like the dewfall, so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread and, giving thanks, broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it. For this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, once more giving thanks, He gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it. For this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. the mystery of faith. We proclaim your death, O Lord, and profess your resurrection until you come again. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world and bring her to the fullness of charity, together with Francis, our Pope, and Richard, our Bishop, and all the clergy. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection, and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, and blessed Joseph, her spouse, with the blessed apostles and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him and with him and in him, O God, almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Amen. At the Saviour's command and formed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Saviour, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. The peace of the Lord be with you always. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. 
grant us peace. Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word and my soul shall be healed. Though many we are one bread, one body, for we all partake of the one bread and one chalice. The body of Christ.
Let us pray. <clears throat> Grant us, almighty God, that we may be refreshed and nourished by the sacrament which we have received, so as to be transformed into what we consume. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. That's a lovely line in the last line of that uh, prayer. So that we may be transformed into what we consume. We have to be Christ in the world. It's lovely to be celebrating Mass with you again. Somebody said to me yesterday, outside the church of course, said, um, have you started saying, having services in the church yet? You've had a long holiday, haven't you? Well, said, well, we only started in July, so we were three months of them, and uh, they hadn't found out. But um, there we are. We have to go and uh, talk to people about our faith, and then we may be, they may talk, talk to us about what happens inside the church. Not that that's important of itself, but uh, we need to be a little more open with our faith, perhaps. Usually um, today, as usual, all through the week, we will have evening prayer at six o'clock, um, every evening except Saturday. And of course, our 10 o'clock live stream Mass will continue into the future. Who knows where it will all end? Well, Mass ends in, in, in heaven, of course. We won't need Mass once we get to heaven. And uh, there will always be Mass every day, um, somewhere. And certainly every day in this parish, all the time we have um, sufficient priests. So I wish you a very happy and uh, bright day, despite the sun has disappeared behind the cloud this morning. The Lord be with you. May Almighty God bless you all, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Go in peace, glorifying the Lord by your life.